those buildings you see along the river bank. One of the buildings here was Wampo's Ice House, which belonged to Hu Ake, a prominent businessman from Wampo, China. Way before refrigerators existed, he noticed a demand for ice in our hot tropical weather and had blocks of ice hauled from frozen lakes in America all the way here to Singapore. Unfortunately, his ice venture failed because expenses were simply too high. But much respect to the imaginative Mr. Fu for his daring attempt to keep Singaporeans cool. Today, Singaporeans keep cool by sipping drinks al fresco by the river. As you can see, Clark Key has been transformed into a different, but no less bustling port of call. Everyone flocks here for food, fun, and riverside festivals. You may notice another bridge here. This one's called Reed Bridge, and it would seem yet another symbol of bringing people together. From the 1940s to the 1960s, this bridge was a popular place for storytellers to gather and jiangku, or shuo shu, which means talking about the past or talking about books. Street hawkers, warehouse laborers, and others from the largely Teochew Chinese community would gather here nightly to be entertained. The storyteller would start by talking about the day's news, then continue with riveting classic tales from ancient China. Each episode would last the duration of a burning joystick, and the audience would pay just one cent in the 1940s and just five cents in the 1960s. Chinese Wayang, or opera, was another popular form of entertainment back then, and there were two Teochew opera theaters here. In the 1950s, admission to watch an entire performance was just 50 cents, but the common practice was to only pay 5 or 10 cents just to catch the last 10 minutes, which was the most exciting part of the show. Some might say this opportunistic spirit of frugalness endures amongst the most cunning of Singaporean businessmen till today. During festivals and religious events, the opera performances would be staged outdoors for all to enjoy free of charge. The area to your right used to be the site of Riverside Village, a plague-infested squatter's colony which housed the seedy underbelly of opium dens, brothels, and secret societies. Addicts, ladies of the night, and gangsters jostled for space in this once dangerous, mysterious place. But today, the building Riverside Point sits on the historical foundations of that notorious village. No longer dangerous and seedy, but a delightful waterfront dining oasis that boasts its very own microbrewery. Perhaps you'd like to return by foot to explore all these fun possibilities. Did you know that the paths along the Singapore River make up one continuous looping promenade that connects everything you see along the riverbanks? Take a leisurely stroll and soak in the atmosphere along the six-kilometer promenade that flanks both sides of the river. As you take in the sights and sounds, you'll be comfortably shaded by lush greenery and definitely tempted by the many shops and cafes along the way. Look across the river and up to your left. See the lush green hill and the large tower overlooking Clarkey and the river? That is Fort Canning Hill, where Raffles built his own bungalow, Singapore's first government house. He also planted a spice garden, Singapore's first experimental botanic garden, to cultivate commercially imported spices. 
The hill was later used by the British as an arms store, barracks and hospital, which probably led to its final name, Fort Canning. But way before the British arrived on our shores, Fort Canning was the place where ancient Malayan royalty once lived and were made to rest. It was considered so sacred that it was known as Forbidden Hill. Forbidden because commoners were not allowed to visit. Of course, all that has changed and now you're most welcome to visit Fort Canning to see the old British underground bunkers and if you're really brave-hearted, explore the ancient gravestones that still remain on its shady slopes. Now here's a building that just begs for attention. See the one adorned with colorful windows on your left? Home to the Ministry of Information, Communications and the Arts, its multi-hued facade not only reflects Singapore's multicultural heritage, but also hints at the building's equally colorful past. Can you believe that this rainbow splash complex used to be the old Hill Street police station and was once considered a skyscraper? But that was before World War II. In fact, the old Hill Street police station served as Singapore's earliest secure jail. And during World War II, it's even believed to have been a torture chamber. With such a vivid history, it's certainly no wonder the building was named a national monument in 1998. On your right is Boat Key and its stretch of colorful, quaint shop houses. It was completed in 1842 and is Singapore's very first key. At its peak in the 1860s, Boat Key handled three quarters of Singapore's total shipping business. The sheltered riverbanks made excellent loading and unloading places. Back then, the whole river was chock a block with thousands of boats transporting a whole myriad of goods to be traded by the merchants who had set up shop in that row of buildings on the bank. Some of those goods included seafood, spices, and rubber. The precious cargo was shouldered across gangplanks by immigrant laborers known as coolies, whose blood, sweat, and tears formed the very backbone of our nation's rise to prosperity. Wonder why all the shop houses are concentrated on just one embankment of Boat Key? Well, legend has it that the Chinese immigrants chose to set up home only on the south bank of the river. You'll notice how the riverbank curves just like the belly of a carp. 
In Chinese culture, this majestic fish is an auspicious symbol of good fortune and a great place to store wealth. These first immigrants believe that this part of the Singapore River was where prosperity and wealth could be found. That's also why many banks and businesses started up here and eventually developed this area into our current central business district. Where once boats lined the water's edge, today the banks of Boat Key are lined with shop houses turned into restaurants and pubs. The facades of the Boat Key shop houses have been retained and their unique architectural styles give the district a distinct flavor. Notice how the shop houses are of varying heights? Long ago, this signaled the owner's wealth. In other words, the higher the building, the wealthier the owner. Perhaps these traditional beliefs have extended till today. Just take a look at the tall skyscrapers of Singapore's financial district towering over the bulky shop houses. This is the perfect place for snapping pictures, so enjoy the 360 degree views and drink in Boki's unique blend of traditional Asian values set against a modern and progressive backdrop. See how the shop houses form a charming contrast of Singapore's developing years against the skyline of a new Singapore. This truly is a uniquely Singapore sight. By the way, are you feeling hungry? Hawkers and their pushcarts used to line the riverbanks, selling local dishes that were cheap and delicious. A bowl of Teochew porridge cost only 10 cents. And better yet, side dishes were free of charge. Every day, the people who worked and lived at the river would eat at these pushcarts, sitting on little stools along the riverbanks. Perhaps that was how alfresco dining got its start in Singapore. Directly ahead is Cabana Bridge, completed in 1869 and named after Colonel Sir William Arthur Cabana, Singapore's last governor, it's Singapore's only suspension bridge to have retained its intricate original form. It was manufactured in Scotland and shipped to Singapore later to be assembled. Unfortunately, the bridge was built too low and boats had to wait for low tide before they could pass. So look out and don't forget to duck as we cruise under the bridge. <laughs> Just kidding. Coming up on the other side of Cabinet Bridge, you'll see a group of little boys jumping into the river. Don't worry about jumping in to save them. They're actually incredibly lifelike bronze sculptures showing a scene from the river's past, where children would stand and wave cheekily from their houses. Very often, they would take up all their clothes and jump in for a cool afternoon swim. Standing tall and majestic is the exclusive Fullerton Hotel, which blends the elegance of old world charm with every modern convenience. Built in 1928, lots of paper pushing went on behind the hotel's splendid columns before its glamorous makeover. Its facade is a masterpiece of neoclassical grandeur, which belies its much stuffier original occupants, the Chamber of Commerce offices and the General Post Office, from which mail was transported along the Singapore River to and from ships. Since the 1950s, this was also the site of many political campaign rallies, but even longer before that, it was occupied by Fort Fullerton, built to defend the town at the mouth of the Singapore River. This promontory to your right used to be home to the Mer Lion, Singapore's half lion, half fish icon. The Mer Lion stood guard here at the river mouth for 30 years before it was hauled by barge to its new home in the bay in 2002. As we make our way out into Marina Bay, you'll be able to see the Mer Lion for yourself and hear all about its story.
as promised, up next is Malayan Park, home of the original Malayan statue. To understand our unique national emblem with the lion head and fish body resting on a crest of waves, here's a quick history lesson. Singapore was originally known as the ancient city of Tamasic, which means sea town in Javanese. But according to legend recorded in the Malay annals, Prince Sang Nila Utama renamed it Singapura, meaning lion city in Sanskrit, after he spotted a lion on its shores. The lion's head represents the lion spotted by the legendary Sang Nila Utama, while its fishtail symbolizes Tamasic and Singapore's humble beginnings as a fishing village. Measuring 8.6 meters high and weighing 70 tons, the Malayan sits on reclaimed land looking out to sea. She attracts millions of visitors a year who make the trip to Malayan Park to photograph this world-famous icon at her new home right here in scenic Marina Bay. Take a peek behind the Malayan and you'll see a baby Malayan. Believe it or not, its scales are made from pieces of porcelain repurposed from spoons, bowls and plates. Next to the Malayan and her cub is a luxurious lifestyle dining and waterfront hotel hub known as the Fullerton Heritage that blends exciting futuristic projects with the older colonial landscape of Singapore.
To your right is Clifford Pier, which was built in 1933 as a landing point for immigrants hoping for a new future in a new land. It was also once known as Red Lamp Pier because legend has it that a red oil lamp used to hang from the pier as a comforting guide to weary seafarers. Mindful of its rich historical past as a bustling trading post and gathering place for food lovers and entertainers, Clifford Pier has been carefully conserved and now serves as the lobby of the Fullerton Bay Hotel. And beside it is Customs House, a charming conservation building from the late 1960s, which began as the Customs Harbor Branch Building, one of Singapore's earliest modern-style public buildings. As Singapore's shipping and trade boomed, it became the home of the Singapore Customs Police, tasked with watching over one of the world's busiest harbors. Further up, you'll see the magnificent Marina Bay Financial Center, which sits on prime waterfront real estate at the heart of Singapore's new downtown and is an expansion of the central business district. Arguably the proud jewel of Marina Bay, this purpose-built financial center combines the best in form and function, lending office towers, luxury apartments, and retail space, making it one of the hottest places to live, play, and work as befitting Singapore's position as a global financial, residential, and entertainment hub. It's also part of the three and a half kilometer Marina Bay waterfront promenade, which has become a popular scenic footpath, especially since this walkway boasts several unique design features. You can look forward to an uninterrupted experiential walk or jog around the bay. Do find time to explore the promenade, which links the landmarks of this beautiful bay area, including Marina Reservoir, Marina Barrage, and Gardens by the Bay. Also located along this fascinating waterfront walk is the Marina Bay City Gallery, which showcases the story of Singapore's urban transformation and the development of Marina Bay. Don't miss its touch-activated exhibits and innovative city model, offering a bird's-eye view of key landmarks in Marina Bay, which will help you navigate the Bay Area. As we make our way back up the river, you may be curious about the type of vessel we're cruising in. Traditionally called bumboats or lighters, these barges were used to transport cargo from ships anchored offshore near the mouth of our Singapore River to the warehouses along the river as early as 150 years ago. In 17th century Europe, they were first used as scavenger or dirt boats to carry rubbish. But some scholars have also agreed that the word bumboat means exactly as it sounds, a ship's bottom or a smaller boat pandering to larger ships. In Singapore though, bumboats are also called tongans from the Malay name given to the timber used to